Hey guys, it's Chris from Highline Guitars and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. In this episode, I am going to share with you my technique for finishing a guitar neck. Now the approach that I use for finishing a guitar neck is very different than how I finish a guitar body. And the reason for that is because of different requirements. With a guitar body, not only do I want to enhance the appearance, but I also want to put down a finish that is going to protect it from scratches and dings. But with a neck, it's a little bit different. I need to seal the wood in order to prevent the wood from absorbing moisture, either from the palm of my hands or from the humidity in the air. Because anytime moisture gets into wood, it's going to cause the wood to move. And that means it can bow, it can twist, and that can affect the playability of the guitar. So the technique that I'm going to use is going to rely on simple, inexpensive, boiled linseed oil. Now over the years, I have used just about every kind of finishing product known to man on both bodies and necks. I've used uh, tongue oil, linseed oil, uh, Danish oil, teak oil. <laughs> I've used oil-based polyurethanes, um, 2K polyurethanes, water-based polyurethanes. I've used nitrocellulose lacquer. I've used UV curable polyesters. And in fact, there's probably a number of other products that I've used that I'm forgetting about. But in the end, what I have found gives me the kind of finish that I want is boil linseed oil. So I'll bring you in and demonstrate this technique and explain a little bit more in detail why I use boil linseed oil. All right, now before I jump into applying my linseed oil to this guitar neck, I want to explain a few things because I know if I don't, I'm going to get some comments down below and people are going to be saying things like, you should try tongue oil or you should try true oil. And as I mentioned, I've used all those products before. I have plenty of experience with them and I know how they work. But the reason why I keep going back to boiled linseed oil is mainly out of cost and convenience. Um, if I want to use pure tongue oil on a guitar neck, uh, I've got to jump in the car and drive across town to a specialty woodworking supply store to purchase the, uh, the product. It's not readily available near where I live. Same thing with true oil. Uh, I haven't been able to find a reliable supplier locally. And when it comes to using true oil, I prefer buying the smallest package possible because it has a very short shelf life. And here's a little tip for you. You can make your own finish that's very similar to true oil. And you simply make it by mixing equal parts of boiled linseed oil, oil-based fast drying polyurethane, and mineral spirits. Now you may have to adjust the ratios a little bit to get it to perform the way you want it to, but that product will uh, pretty much accomplish the same thing as true oil at a fraction of the cost. So um, there's that to consider as well. But again, I, I like to use boiled linseed oil because I can walk over to my local hardware store and they've always got it in stock and a quart of this stuff is about half the price uh, of a quart of uh, tongue oil. So that's the reason why I prefer to use the boiled linseed oil. And in the end, based on my experience, and I've, you know, I've used boiled linseed oil and tongue oil extensively, I really don't feel there's that much of a difference in the appearance and performance of the two products. Uh, I think I could put two necks side by side, one finished with tongue oil and one finished with boiled linseed oil, and visually you couldn't tell the difference at all. And when you handle the wood, I seriously doubt you could tell which one was tongue oil and which one was boiled linseed oil. They're that close to being the same. So I've just uh, been relying on using this product and I feel it works the best. So let me go ahead and I'm going to apply it to this really nice piece of bird's eye maple that I selected for this guitar neck. And I'll show you uh, how I apply it. Now oils like boiled linseed oil and tongue oil 
are classified as drying oils. And when you spread them thin onto wood, they'll soak into the wood and uh, their exposure to oxygen in the air we breathe will cause them to undergo a process called polymerization where they'll dry eventually. Now, tongue oil in its pure form can take, I've found that it takes usually a week or two for it to dry. Now, the boiled linseed oil, however, uh, will dry typically in, um, I would say, a minimum of eight hours and a maximum of about 48 hours. So I typically will give it a couple of days to make sure it's dry. Now, wh what boiled linseed oil is, uh, it's important to understand uh, you don't want to confuse boiled linseed oil with raw linseed oil or pure linseed oil. Raw or pure linseed oil, even though it's still classified as a drying oil, it will take forever and a lifetime to dry. I mean, you can put raw linseed oil onto a piece of wood and come back a several years later and it will still feel tacky. It takes forever to dry. And, to, and mainly raw and pure linseed oil which are the same thing. The main thing that those are used for is artists like to use it to mix into oil paints um, to extend the dry time. So it's not something I would recommend for use on finishing wood. Uh, you want to use the boiled linseed oil. And originally what a boiled linseed oil was, was they would take raw linseed oil, they would heat it up to a, a specific temperature and hold it there and that would trigger the polymerization process. Then they would take it off the heat and rapidly cool it, which would stop the polymerization process. They package it and that would be used for finishing wood. And once you applied that boiled linseed oil thin to the surface of the wood, the oxygen would trigger the drying process and it would it greatly speeded up the, the process of drying the linseed oil. And that became really popular. However, heating the oil up and then cooling it is a time-consuming and expensive process. So what they're doing these days is instead of heating up huge batches of oil, they're just mixing in a, uh, a chemical drying agent, which essentially does the same thing. It, it's really basically um, uh, doesn't do anything in the product when it's in the container, but once you uh, pour it out and begin to spread it thin, it reacts with the oxygen and that triggers it to dry much faster. So that's something you need to consider uh, when selecting linseed oil. You want to make sure it says boiled. Don't get the raw linseed oil or that neck that you're about to finish will be wet five, ten years down the road. Now, before you start applying the oil, I think it's a good idea to pour it from the container into a separate disposable plastic container. And this is just something that, I think this came from the grocery store, and it was one of those containers that holds lunch meat. I just washed it out, and I can use these and dispose of them. But the reason for that is, as you can see around the top of this container, it gets pretty cruddy over time. And I don't want to get any of that residue onto the rag as I'm applying it. So I just pour it into a separate container. Now, as I said, when you apply this and wipe it on in a thin layer, it's going to take, um, you know, at least two to three days to dry. And a lot of that depends on the environment where you're applying it the temperature and the humidity. The cooler it is and the more humid it is, the longer it takes for it to dry. If you want to speed up the drying process dramatically, there is a trick, and I do this pretty much every time I use the boiled linseed oil, and that is the secret weapon, Japan dryer. And what I do is I will simply wipe down the surface of the wood with a little bit of this Japan dryer. And it will soak into the wood. You can already kind of see even with the Japan dryer how that boiled or that bird's eye maple is going to look. But what this stuff will do is it will force that oil to dry much, much faster.
Okay, now I can take another cloth here and I'm simply going to dab it into the boiled linseed oil, get a fair amount on there. Now I'm going to start by applying it to the headstock, just wiping it on as you see here. And that's really all there is to it. It's pretty simple to apply it. It'll soak in and then it'll begin to dry. Now I'm going to do the back side of the neck. And we're going to put a thin, even coating over the wood. Now I've done the back side completely. And we have it thoroughly covered so you can see how that looks. And I can let this dry. And um, it's mid-morning right now, so this time tomorrow I'll come back and check it. And in all likelihood at that point, it'll be dry. Now with this product, you can't really build up coats you know, for it to, to achieve a gloss sheen, you're only going to be able to get a satin or matte sheen with this type of product. However, I don't know that many people who really like to play guitars that have glossy finished necks because, as I've said, when you're playing, the moisture in your palms causes your hand to kind of stick when the surface has that glossy sheen. So, um, I think it is best just to give it a, a natural oil finish and let that absorb in and dry. After applying the Japan dryer and the boiled linseed oil, I'll let the neck sit for maybe about an hour or so, and that'll uh, allow the oil to soak into the wood. And then I can proceed with the next step. And this next step is actually an option, but it's one that I highly recommend that you do because it's going to take the surface feel of the neck up to the next level. And what I'm talking about is I'm going to wet sand the surface of the neck with some 1500 grit wet dry sandpaper. And for a lubricant, I'm going to use odorless mineral spirits and just a splash of boiled linseed oil. I have poured just a small amount of the odorless mineral spirits into this container here. And I'm going to add just a splash, a few drops of the boiled linseed oil. It, it's not a lot. It'll just kind of act as a slippery lubricant for the sandpaper. And then I'll just dip my sandpaper in, get it wet. And then I'll just begin sanding the neck like this. And you just want to make sure you are consistent with your sanding and make sure that you cover every inch. Now, in truth, all you have to do is sand the back contour because that's what you, that's where you're resting your hand when you play, or placing your hand when you play. And I like to do the whole neck. I'll do the, the headstock as well. Once I have finished wet sanding, I'll just wipe off the excess. After I finished wet sanding and wiping down the neck, I'm going to hang it up and let it dry for a couple of days. And during that time, I'll come back and check the surface uh, periodically because since I used mineral spirits to wet sand the surface, sometimes the mineral spirits which have soaked into the wood will rise up and you'll start to see tiny little shiny spots of the mineral spirits as it migrates up to the surface. And if I see those, I'll just wipe them off with a clean cloth and continue to let it dry. Now, of course, whenever you're using oil-based products, you want to make sure that you dispose of the rags properly because these oils, as they dry, they can generate heat. And if you pile a bunch of rags into the trash can, that heat has nowhere to go. And it just continues to build and build until it spontaneously combusts. And trust me, I have seen that happen. 
it's dangerous. So what I typically do is I'll lay out the rags on a concrete floor and I'll just let that oil dry. And it'll take a couple of days. But once it's dry, and you can tell because the rag becomes fairly stiff, I'll then put them into a plastic Ziploc bag or a coffee can and then soak them in water. And I'll do that on the day when my uh, trash is going to be picked up by the garbage collector. And then I'll set it out and let them uh, take care of it. But you don't want to pile up the rags. You don't want to overlap them. You just want to lay them out apart from one another and let that oil dry before you dispose of them. Boy, I wish you could feel the back of this neck. It feels absolutely silky smooth. Uh, the palm of my hand does not stick as I slide it along the contour. And that's something you typically uh, will experience with a neck that's been clear coated with a plastic-like product such as nitrocellulose lacquer, polyurethane, or polyester. And um, this neck is, for all intents and purposes, finished. So now I can install it into the body and proceed with the uh, guitar's final assembly. So hopefully, uh, this video has given you some food for thought and, and maybe you've learned something and um, can apply that to one of your future guitar builds. And if you like the video, be sure to click the like button. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. You know, keep it clean. I always police those. And if you don't already subscribe, please, I encourage you to subscribe, especially if you want to learn all kinds of different tips and tricks for building and setting up your guitars and hit that little bell icon next to the subscribe button and make sure that your YouTube account is set up to accept notifications. That way every time I post a video, which is usually only about once, maybe twice a week, you'll get a notification in your email that the video is up there and ready for you to watch. So uh, that's it for now. Take care and I'll see you next week.